Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. And this one we're continuing our C++ embedded presentation. And as promised in the previous video, we're continuing with the overloading. So there's actually another type of overloading, but for now I'm talking about the function overloading. And this is talking about how you can declare multiple functions with the same name, but different input and types of arguments. In C, you can only use the same name of the function once. And then even though you have multiple different arguments, then you have to rename your function. So if you have a function for int, you're doing something like foo i or foo, uh, foo c for sharp. In C++, this restriction is lifted because you can use different types, different number, or the combination of two of arguments in the function, but the function name can be the same. But do know that this doesn't count for return types. So in this example, we have three different declarations of the function foo, and each of them has the same return type, but the input arguments are different. So one accepts one int, one char, and one float. And the compiler can tell the difference between these functions. So we have an integer, char, and a float, and it demangles in a more human readable format. So this is the powerful thing about C++ that you can have the same name for a func for, f for different number of function implementations. And this is particularly useful, and you've probably met this feature in Arduino. When you're using Arduino serial print, you can put in loads of different types and it can be printed differently. If you're using int, then it's printed as a number. If you're using a double, then it's printed as a double point, so something dot something. And in const char pointer, it's printed as a text and a char, although similar to int, is being printed as a printable character. And this is the possible by the function overloading. The next part that you can see in these declarations is this pattern with the equals in the declarations. Although these declarations don't have argument names, which is also per permittable in C, uh, they do have this equals and a value. Well, this is called a default function argument. And this is a particularly handy feature in function declarations when some of the arguments have almost always a default value that you're not really changing that much. So if you have a less used argument, you can put a default value on it and then you can omit from putting that in the function call. So, but there's another catch that you can only use this for trailing arguments, meaning the last arguments in the list. And also, this can be also only put in the function declaration. So you have a function declaration in a header file, you can use that there, but in a function definition, you have to omit it. So in this case, we have a function declaration of a function called calculate, and it calculates a particular value. And a certain option, in this case that's, is provided as a default, because it's not that usually changed. But if you want to change it, you can call this function with two parameters. But if you don't want to change it and keep it as default, you can, only con uh, you can also call it with one argument. But on the bottom you have the inappropriate use of this feature, because the second argument is default, but the third one is not. And we get an error because the default argument missing for parameter free of int. So in this case, we want to have it as a default argument as well, or we have to move this default argument to the back of the list. The next topic is casting, and it's quite an important topic because casting is used all the time. So what is casting? Well, casting is a way to tell the compiler to convert explicitly one type to another. And this counts for either values, for pointer, constants, and all sorts of things. So we either convert floating numbers to integers, so we lose the floating precision, or we change the way that the pointer is looking at a particular part of the memory. So if it's pointing to a float, and while now we tell it that it's pointing to an int, that, that value is going to be pretty weird, because the floating notation is not the same as int notation. Or if we're doing a const casting, we're removing the const keyword from a particular value. So how is it used? Well, in C, you do casting the same way for all the types that I have just described. And it's by using this parenthesis, and inside of them you put the new type, and on the right side you have the old type, either a variable or a literal. And C++ provides for each type of cast its own sort of function, which also produces some form of compile time checks as well. So for value casting, which is quite common, we use static cast. And the, in these angle brackets, you put in the new value type, and in the parentheses, you put in the old either variable or a temporary, or a literal. 
For pointer casting, we're using the reinterpret cast, which is quite descriptive because we're reinterpreting the bytes to where the pointer is pointing to. And in this case, in the brackets, you put in the new pointer type and in the parentheses, you put in the old pointer type. With const cast, we have quite a self-explanatory name, const cast. And again, in the angle brackets, you put in the same pointer or a value type, but without the const. And in the parentheses, you put either the pointer or a literal. Now, why would you want to use this long signature for casting and especially distinguishing between different types of casting? Uh, well, this way you can much more easily point it because if you have just an int and a parenthesis, this can also be part of a function declaration or definition. But if you use static cast, well, this is the only type of static cast in the code if you're not using the uh, old style C casting. And there's also a compiler argument to alert you if you're using the old style C style casting in your C++ code, which is, can be really handy so you can much more easily find the cast. Also one particular thing why these types of casts are distributed between these different sort of function calls, it's because a pointer and const cast can introduce some undefined behavior. Let's say we have a pointer to a short and we try to reinterpret it as an int, then the compiler will try to read more bytes in the memory than there are available for that particular memory. And that can introduce some undefined behavior. Also const cast. There's a reason why you have such some pointers const, because if a function can omit the constness and modify the value without the user knowing, then it can also produce some undefined behavior and bugs in the code. Now let's go through some examples to really illustrate these points. For value cast, we have an f which is of type float and has this particular value. If you just try to stuff this f into an int, we get a warning as a conversion from float to int may change value. And this warning is produced by enabling the w conversion flag and it works both for C and C++. When you have to add the casting in order to remove this warning. And in C++ we use the static cast. In this case, we're converting from float to an int. Now the second example is using an enum class. And if you remember from the previous videos, the enum is just an integer disguised in a type and the enum class in C++ prevents from enums being implicitly converted to int. And let's say we have also a function that accepts an int. Now we declare a me member called config, which is of type also enum config, and it has a value. And then we try to stuff it into a function that accepts an int. And now, as we said, the enum class prevents conversion from enum to int implicitly. So we get this error. But if you use a static cast to convert it to an int, which it actually is in the background, then it's all okay. Next is the reinterpret cast. Let's say we have a function that accepts a pointer to a constant uint8 data. Now we want to send this const char message called hello world. So they're both const, but they're both of, of different types. So when you try to call send uart with this message, you get an error, invalid conversion from const char pointer to const uint8 pointer. So we have a conversion of two different types. And so we have to use reinterpret cast. So we use reinterpret cast to transform into uint8 t const pointer from a char const pointer. Another note, because reinterpret cast tells the compiler to treat the different data pointed to by the pointer differently, we have to really check that the data is at least of compatible size. So in this case, we know for our platform that uint8t is the same size as char, so everything is fine. And the last one is the const cast. And in this case, it's kind of a similar example. So we have a function called print that prints a char pointer data of size length. Now we again have a char const pointer to a string literal called hello world, and we try to print it. In C, we only get a warning, but at least we get something saying passing argument one of print discards const qualifier from pointer target type. So we're disqualifying the constness of the input argument because the function doesn't have it. But in C++, we get an error. So it stops the compilation, which is much more powerful. Invalid conversion from const chime pointer to just char pointer. So we know that we goofed something. Also, if you want to print straight a string literal like hello world by calling this function, 
We get a warning both in C and C++, which says that ISO C++ forbids converting from a string constant to char pointer. That's because string literals, like hello world in quotation, here and here, are both stored in read-only memory of your executable. This means that this function can potentially transform the read-only part of your memory, which is undefined behavior. That's why we need to confirm that the function print does not modify our data before we use it with the const cast. So this is omitting the, uh, the constants of our message variable and the function executes with no problem. But again, if the function print can modify the data because it's just using a raw pointer, then we're in for some undefined behavior. And the last topic for today is using. Because you can see the form, the using is another keyword. Well, the using is the same practically as type def in C, but it has, in my opinion, a nicer syntax and has multiple uses with the same pattern, with the same, uh, with a similar use case, so it's more intuitive to use it at multiple places. These are the four bullet points on where the using can be used. But the one we are looking at right now and for today is the last one, which is a type alias or an alias tablet for declaration. So this is an alias for a different type. So what are type aliases? Let's say we want to have our own type called a C32 for a constant 32 type. And we can use type def in which the last word is the new name, but everything before it is the type of this new name. So in this case, uint32t const is the c32. With using, we use a much nicer expression. We say using u34 equals to uint32t. And then when we use it in a function, it looks like this. Again, there are more use cases for using, but this is the most simple one. Again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video when we're continuing with a quite a big topic of compile time and const.